Well, today we're going to continue the series we started last week about what, as a pastor, I feel like God's speaking to me for 2023. There was a verse that we talked about last week. Uh, it's a verse that we read the first week of the year. It's in Matthew chapter 3. Uh, it says, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And that, that idea of Jesus that he communicated to John is what's resonating in my heart this year. His desire was to fulfill all righteousness. I believe God's desire is that in us, all righteousness would be fulfilled. So we looked at the word fulfill last week, what it meant in Greek, what it, what it was understood to mean at that time, uh, words like accomplish or satisfy. Uh, there was a way in which it was used in the due season or in the right moment to fill to capacity, uh, to even stretch just a little bit, to level up is the idea of being fulfilled. I believe that God has fulfillment for us, for his children this year. I believe he desires for us to live fulfilled lives. This phrase that he spoke, he said, not just to be fulfilled, but to fulfill all righteousness. We're going to look at the word righteousness, but I just want to highlight that, that three-letter word in the middle, all. Uh, I remembered this. I was proud of myself from my studies long ago in Greek. The same word can be translated each, every, all. God desires to fulfill each righteousness, every righteousness, all righteousness. And so if we know he wants to accomplish all, each, every of this thing we call righteousness. That's the question we're going to wrestle through today. That's the, the understanding that we're going to try to come to. What is righteousness? I think I could pause or encourage you to pause this video right now and stop and think, what do you define righteousness as? You know, apparently it's a pretty difficult word to define or even to enact. I mean, when we look at the, at the book of Matthew, there were many pursuing righteousness. And in Matthew chapter 6, he's saying to all these, be careful not to do or practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you'll do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet's writing to the kingdom of Judah, and he says, your righteousness, it's filthy rags to God. You know, later or earlier in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, do not think I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. There seems to be some understanding, kingdom understanding that Jesus is bringing to the word righteousness. The people in which he was speaking to, the people in which he was surrounded by, they were doing everything they could, the acts they would fast and they would pray and they would help and they would give. They were doing the actions of righteousness. But Jesus was saying, you know, the Pharisees, the one that, that do these acts the best, unless your righteousness is greater than theirs, it doesn't mean anything. So what is righteousness? What is kingdom righteousness? What is the righteousness that we're pursuing? You know, some perspective from the book of Proverbs. We're going to see what righteousness is not. The righteousness of the blameless makes their paths straight, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by their evil desires. Truly, the righteous attain life, but whoever pursues evil finds death. The Lord detests those whose hearts are perverse, but he delights in those whose ways are blameless. See, there's words of righteous or righteousness, and they're, they're countered with what righteousness is not. Righteousness is not found in the wicked or the unfaithful, or those who pursue evil. Those whose hearts are perverse, they aren't the ones who are righteous. So obviously, there's something different in righteousness. 
Righteousness is something that God desires for each and every one of us. Righteousness, it's an idea that can be found in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 says, For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life to Jesus Christ our Lord. See, righteousness is simply the right position, the right standing, the right relationship that God designed for us to have. The story of, uh, of the Bible is simple with one man, Adam, through him, sin entered this world. That sin messed up our relationship with God. It messed it up in, in ways of purpose. It messed it up in ways of plan. It messed it up in sickness. It messed it up in separation. Sin came into this world and messed up the plans of God. It broke the relationship between man and God. Righteousness is taking that which is broken and putting it in the way in which God God designed it. People thought they could have righteousness, right standing with God because of what they've done or how much they've given or how much of this or how much of that. But that wasn't truly righteous. It was only the product of righteousness. Obedience to the law. It's simply the outward evidence of the righteousness that's within us. You know, I was thinking of some illustrations. There's wind. And what do we measure? We measure the wind by what we see. We see the trees. We see the leaves. We see the flags. That's how we measure wind. Happiness. There's so many people that say they have happiness. They put a smile on their face and they tell jokes and they laugh. But they're empty and broken on the inside. There's an outward evidence that man can fake. But there's a righteousness. There's a wholeness. There's a completion that only comes through Jesus Christ. Paul teaches on righteousness. Philippians chapter 3. If someone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, and regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ. My Lord, for whose sake I've lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in a Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. There's where righteousness lies. Righteousness only comes from from God, through faith, through the basis of faith. You know, to the church in Rome, Paul writes another letter. In that letter, in the first couple chapters of that letter, these are people who were steeped in the law, in the traditions. They found righteousness and, and they've had the outward evidences. But Paul, he has to address this righteousness. In Romans chapter 3, now that we know whatever the law says. It says that those who are under law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. It's not through the law that we become righteous, but it's through faith. He continues, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference between Jew or Gentile, for we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In all are justified. That means made freely. He freely made us right in his sight by his grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. 
Romans 10, it says, if you openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it's by believing in your heart you're made right with God. And it's by opening and declaring your faith that you're saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. My right standing with God comes from the proclamation of my mouth and the belief in my heart. My right standing with God is absolute when I've confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've taken myself out of that place where everything was wrong. We were under the umbrella of sin. But when we confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that umbrella of sin that was everything that is wrong in us is now removed. And now I put myself under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. My standing, my life, my worth, my value, my forgiveness, my eternity, it's all right now because of Jesus Christ. My righteousness is in him. The product of my faith is in him. My, my purpose and what I can accomplish, it comes through him. Kingdom righteousness is found in Jesus Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation for who, those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. I'm righteous. I'm righteous not because of what I've done. I'm righteous not because I live a perfect life. I'm righteous because of the perfect sacrifice was shed for me. And I became a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may he turn his face towards you, grant you his peace. And may you discover the certainty of your righteousness. Be blessed.